Well, Professor Clements with you. As we consider a more complicated circuit, we want to solve this circuit for the values of the currents in each branch of the circuit. And to do so, we'll use Kirchhoff's rules. Uh, we can't uh, simplify this circuit down to one battery and one resistor with our rules of series and parallel arrangements. So we'll have to approach the problem in a little different way, and that's the Kirchhoff's rules. So if there are series resistors in any branch, you should go ahead and uh, simplify the circuit. So there is just one resistor uh, and the battery in uh, the branches. Um, your next step would be to locate the nodes and from one node to another node label a current. This is just a guess for the direction of the current. So we have I1 is my guess moving around the uh, branch this way. I2 I'm guessing starts over here at uh, B, ends over here at this node. And I3 I'm also starting at B and ending at this node. The currents are uh, a tool to allow us to solve this problem. We label the current arrow. That will help us in writing down Kirchhoff's rules equations. The first rule that we'll use is the junction rule. So here at B, notice I1 would be coming into that junction. I2 and I3 would be leaving the junction. There's conservation of charge here. There are no electrons being produced at junction B, no electrons being absorbed in the wire. So the current that comes in, I1, has the same size as the currents I2 plus I3. That's uh, Kirchhoff's rule number one, the junction rule. Then we pick any two of, in this case, there are three possible loops. We pick any two. I could, I could start at the point here and I uh, write down an expression for the changes in potential around a complete loop, not just the branch from node to node, but a complete loop. So if I start here, I'm going to go up in potential 6 volts. There's going to be a voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor. There's going to be a, another up uh, increase in potential going across this battery. And another voltage drop here. And I'm back to here. And my net change in potential is zero. I have to be at the same potential I started. In doing this process, it will help you if you, on your drawing, you've already guessed the direction of the currents. When a current comes into a resistor, <coughs> you should label that resistor with a plus on that side. And so I'm doing that for all of the uh, resistors here. This will tell you whether you have a voltage drop or voltage gain if you would choose a certain direction of analyzing a path around the loop. So let's do this top small loop. And I'm starting over here at uh, junction A. <coughs> writing down the expression for the potential changes. So the 6, that's the 6 volts we gain as we go to the plus side of the battery. So I'm starting here, I'm going across the battery, that's a plus 6. I come to this resistor, there's a voltage drop, I times R, across this resistor. So it's I1 and I'm multiplied by a 2 for the 2 ohms. Then we come here through B, I'm taking the path through the middle, so there's an increase of 3 volts and then another voltage drop. We're going from plus to minus on the resistor. There's a voltage drop of the 5 ohms times I2. That'll be our second equation. There are three unknowns here, three currents. So I need three equations. I'm going to do the outermost loop. So we start here at point A, up 6 volts, minus 2 times I1 for that voltage drop. And then going on the outside now, there's no battery in this bottom loop for this problem. But I would have another voltage drop here, a minus 7I3 to account for. Now I have three equations and three unknowns. We use algebra techniques to solve them. And the technique that's commonly used in simple problems like this would be to substitute I1 every place that it appears replacing I1 with what it's equal to, I2 plus I3. So here's a little summary of the, the equations. And now I'm replacing using I1 in here, remembering to distribute by the minus 2 in this case, minus 2 also down here. 
So this uh, equation number 2 becomes 9 minus 2 times the quantity I2 plus I3, still minus 5 uh, I2, and we uh, need to slide up here just a little bit. So pause the, uh, the video if you need to, to kind of catch up with me, but replacing I1 with I2 plus I3, as I distribute here, I have minus 2I2 and minus 2I3. Be careful to also distribute the minus sign through the square bracket. So I have that uh, arrangement. And for equation 3, again replacing I1 with I2 plus I3, distributing another minus 2I2, minus 2I3. In these two equations, now we can gather like terms and based on the current and form I'll call equation A and equation B. So up here we have um, a minus 2I2 and a minus 5I2. I'm going to gather those two terms together creating minus 7I2 and still have the minus 2I3. Same uh, process down here but now I3 is the uh, repeated term, the like terms. You know, we have minus 9I3 there. I need now to eliminate either the I2 or the I3. So what I'm going to do is multiply through these two equations by some constant. Um, and we can always, you know, I can multiply by 2 across here. Or I could multiply by minus 3 on this one. And I'd still have equality. Um, that's an allowed operation. If I have, uh, you know, x equals y, it's also true that 2x equals 2y. I can multiply both sides by a constant. Just make sure you multiply both sides by the same constant. So I'm going to choose to multiply equation A, this first one, by plus 2. And I'm going to choose to multiply B by minus 7. So why would I choose those numbers? Well, if I observe here, um, I'm going to add these two equations. I want to get the coefficients of I2 to be the same size number with opposite signs. So multiplying by 2 here, that will create a minus 14 coefficient. Multiplying by minus 7, that will create a plus 14 situation. And you can observe those results uh, in the box over here. We have a uh, result after multiplying by the 2, 18 minus 14 I2 minus 4 I3. And equation B becomes minus 42, now that's the 6 times the minus 7, plus 14 I2. And then the minus 7 times the minus 9 generates a plus 63. Now we're in a position we can add these two equations. We can add equations. Uh, it's perfectly legal. And when we do that, the plus 18, the minus 42, the minus dominates, we get minus 24. The minus 14 and the plus 14 have created 0 coefficient. And the plus 63 and the minus 4 of 59 I3 the I2 term is now gone as a zero coefficient. And we can solve for I3. If you do that, try that on your calculator. I think you'll get uh, close to 0.407. I've rounded a little bit. But now we know the number for I3. We have two more currents to calculate, I2 and I1. Well, if we know the value of I3, we know a number, we can use either of these two equations and solve for I2. And once we get the value for I2, then we'll come back to our junction equation. We know I2, we know I3, we can calculate I1. So let's continue. So I'm going to use the second uh, equation here, putting in the value for um, I3. So 6 minus 2I2 minus 9 times the known uh, value of I3 now. We just calculated it, 0 0.407. And we do the calculation, combine the numbers, and we find that I2 is a uh, 1.168 um, positive. The I3 also came out to be a positive result. I'll comment on that in just a little bit. Now we put in the uh, I2 and the I3 values, and we can calculate I1. So we've solved the uh, uh, system here. We found the current in each branch. As we did so, none of our i's came up to be a negative. And that's fine. That means you don't have to do the last step. If an i would have had a negative value, then we'd have to come back to our drawing here and reverse the arrow. 
Um, so you're just guessing the direction of these current arrows to start the problem. If you guess incorrectly, uh, the value of i will come up to be a negative number. That just tells you to reverse the direction of the arrow to better understand the uh, true direction, uh, in quotes, of the conventional current. Um, so that's the method using Kirchhoff's rules. We can't simplify to one battery, one resistor. We can't use series and parallel to uh, simplify these because the batteries intervene. Um, we use a junction rule to uh, describe how the currents are related. Then we pick, and th when there are three branches, as typically our problems will have, we pick any two loops. We go completely around the loop, accounting for all the changes in potential. Um, once we have those three equations, commonly we'll sub do a substitution. We'll replace I1 with what it's equal to, I2 and I3. Work through combining like terms. And then we get two equations and two unknowns. We uh, choose some coefficient. I could have multiplied by plus 9 and equation B by minus 2 and canceled off the I3 first and solved for I2 we would have achieved this number and then put that back in, I would have found I3. And then lastly, uh, use the junction equation for currents and find the value for I1. So there we are. We'll do some more practicing of this in class. You should practice a little bit on your own.